So today I'll be responding to my peers' claim that adopting a plant-based diet has numerous benefits among saving animals' lives. Their two secondary claims included that plant-based diets provided health advantages as well as helped restore the environment. To go straight into the first point regarding health advantages, the specific advantages mentioned were that weight loss is much easier and more manageable, as well as that inflammation and arthritis systems uh, symptoms as well as chronic disease and cancer risk decrease. We did hear a relevant personal weight loss story um, while singular, but also plant-based diets may lead to a person's weight loss over time. It doesn't, um, so does any diet with reasonable portion sizes because as long as you're ingesting less calories than um, you're using, then weight loss will happen. Um, while someone may choose to switch to a plant-based diet, they may not be fully aware of how to fulfill or if, even in an area capable of fulfilling their nutrient needs while also not going over the total number of calories they ingested that day. Um, as Dr. Riciotti and Dr. Her, editors of Chief of Harvard Women's Health Watch explained in their 2018 article, cupcakes, cookies, and candy are all technically vegetarian but not necessarily ones that will improve your health or help you shed pounds. That said, a well-constructed and healthy plant-based vegetarian diet can help you lose weight over time, provided you make good food choices and reduce the number of calories you normally eat. But obviously, that's really good general advice, um, and that could apply to any type of diet, not just plant-based. Therefore, the planning required to make a plant-based diet actually healthy and beneficial does not necessarily make it more manageable due to loss of convenience. While granted, all types of diets should be given at least some forethought, or thought in a commonly meat-eating society, finding meatless options can actually be more time-consuming or restrictive, um, especially if someone is not used to having such a limit. Um, in a 2011 column by Hal Herzog, who's a professor of psychology at Western Carolina University, but also an author of books relating to his own vegetarian life, he said about a quarter of our ex-vegetarians described the hassles they said were associated with vegetarianism because they complained that it was difficult to find high quality organic vegetables in their local supermarkets at a reasonable price. Others began to resent the time it took to prepare meatless dishes, and some said they simply grew tired of the lifestyle. Herzog also referenced another author in that, um, in that uh, article, which would be a 2009 New York Times op-ed by philosopher as well as longtime vegan Gary Steiner, where he described his personal experience with giving up consumption of animal products. He said he was over, overall satisfied with his choice, but specifically said that what were once most straightforward activities become a constant ordeal. Uh, the context of that was lunch dates, dinner parties, and the like, but that can also be applied to all types of situations. Um, saying like if you were a family of four and only one of you chooses to go vegetarian, like the mother or sister, um, the many possible outcomes, which would be two sets of groceries being bought or other people also changing the diets, um, they're all arguably less convenient or more manageable without the needed resources being easily available. Sorry. Regarding reducing inflammation and arthritis system, symptoms and cancer and chronic disease risk, the provided evidence just wasn't relevant as the 2012 TuffSnap article originally cited. Uh, only discussed vitamin B12 deficiency and accelerated cognitive decline with no mention of any plant-based diets at all, arthritis or even cancer. The article did, however, mention how animal proteins such as lean meats, poultry, and eggs are actually good sources of vitamin B12 for anyone who may have trouble absorbing the vitamin. Um, a separate 2014 meta-analysis published on the British Medical Journal did provide evidence that higher consumption of fruits and vegetables, but not necessarily an absence of meat entirely, is associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality. Um, to transition to the second point regarding how plant-based diets help clean and restore the environment, the original focus was on factory farms and their greenhouse gases, and how plant-based diets could help reduce the prevalence of both. It was stated that greenhouse gases will soon surpass fossil fuels if we don't take action, but Greenhouse gas is defined as an emission primarily coming from the burning of fossil fuels, so I'm not sure if that was just a definitionary misunderstanding. Um, as well as the EPA states in 2018 that the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions from human activities in the United States from burning fossil fuels were actually from heat, electricity, and transportation at 11%, 28.4%, and 28.5% of total emissions respectively. And the entire agriculture sector only accounted for 9% of total emissions. And the largest specific contributors of those emissions were from cows, agricultural soils, and rice production 
um, respectively. While it was also stated that less resources are needed for plant based foods versus animal products, the EPA rated rice production specifically over most livestock, pretty much all livestock other than cows. Um, and when measuring water consumption of livestock, the National Geographic explains that a lot of virtual or hidden water is added, such as from the corn or soy that the livestock actually eats. So we always have to uh, take that into account. And when asked for ways to reduce the agricultural sector's emissions, the first response that the EPA actually gave was to adjust the methods for managing, managing land and growing crops since overfertilization of soil causes more nitrogen to be emitted than the methane from cows, as well as an estimated only 2% of farmers actually use an efficient irrigation system. 